Somebody uh, the other day at a gig made fun of me. <laughs> and uh, they suggested that I do a Christmas album. <laughs>
I put my shoulder under it and dragged it to the street. Struggled through a wall of screams as they led me through the gate. It seemed that thousands lined the streets, their voices filled with hate. Like a war pack in the night that moves in for the kill. They closed the gap and followed us as we started up the hill. Well, it seemed I'd barely reached the top when they grabbed it from behind. They threw the cross down under me, tied the ropes that bind. My arms close to the beams as they nailed the feet and hands and they raised the cross up in the air. And dropped it in its hands. Through a blur of pain, I saw the cross there next to mine. There were people all around it, so I looked to read the sign that was nailed there above his head so the world could see the news. The man who seemed so helpless there was the king of all the Jews. This crowd that stood around his cross made jokes about his name. They shouted and laughed and spat on him, so I joined in the game. I said, hey, if you're the king, why don't you get us down from here? Well, my voice just sounded hollow. It echoed in my ear. Because he looked at me with eyes that seemed to reach into my heart. Shown a lie from all my lies and tore my life apart. There was more no there behind that gaze than simply blood and clay. No one was too much for me. I had to look away. I chanced another look at him when he was looking down. For the soldiers who just crucified us drank there on the ground. And although he spoke them quietly, how his words came through. He said, Father, please forgive them, for they don't know what they do. And as if they heard him speaking, the crowd began to roar, with a frenzy by the priest who urged them on the bar. But the worst of the accusations, now the plainer I could see the guilt of the accusers, not the one there next to me. And then the man upon the other cross began to curse and swear. And his voice was filled with venom as he hurled it through the air. All the horror that was in him, and it laid his life to waste, came out in every syllable. He swung in Jesus' face. Jesus only looked at him, and something rose inside of me in spite of all that watched us there. It couldn't be denied, because his righteousness and innocence was shining bright and strong, and I just couldn't keep my silence. Still, I heard things going on. I cried out, don't you hear the wrath of God? Even at the end, he'll curse us both into the pit. Is that what you intend? We're only getting what we're due. We've sinned our whole lives long, so don't you talk to him that way. He's done nothing wrong. Then with all my courage in a voice not quite my own, I asked him, Lord, remember me when you come into your throne. And he answered me, and even then his love was undisguised. He said, before the sun is set today, you'll be with me in paradise. Shouts and curses did not stop, even when the sunlight ceased. Somehow in the midst of it, my soul had been released. And though the agony continued, it was still too small a price to be allowed to hear those words and to die beside the Christ.
tried it last night and it was too low, so I'm going to try it a little higher. I hate my capo, by the way. If anybody has a better one. Gates and doors and bars, all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness, rose to every sound, half in hope of sorrow, half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through, drag this all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. Gates began to rattle and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window. I looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sounds of soldiers' feet. Well, there was no one there but Mary, and I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me and she told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night. None of us knows where. Stones been rolled away. Now his body isn't there. But we both ran toward the garden and John ran on ahead. Found the stone in the empty tomb just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell. Our where they taken him was more than I could tell. Back inside the house again, the guilt and anguish came. Everything I promised him just added to my shame. When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. Even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume. The light that shone from everywhere drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood before me, his arms held open wide. I fell down to my knees and clung to him and cried. Well, he raised me to my feet, and as I looked into his eyes, the light was shining out from them like sunlight from the skies. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release, and every fear I'd ever had just melted into peace. Well, he's alive, oh, he's alive. He is alive and I'm forgiven and I 